G'day guys, it's Rodney from I Comply here. And we're here for another segment of Having a Yarn on the Farm, where we talk about all things farming related in the horticultural space. And today I'm really excited because I got a very special guest, uh, a lady that's really been progressive in her thinking in marketing and uh, set up Veg TV, Catherine Valicia from uh, Valicia Farms. Kath, how are you going? Fantastic. Thank you, Rodney. I was, I was excited when you reached out and you know, the more we've had a little chat before we've done this podcast and it's really exciting to meet with someone who's such aligned in values and there's so well, much enthusiasm as I do. We, we actually go back a long way. Um, you know, my, my family are, were in the produce markets and uh, we handled a lot of Alicia, um, of Alicia cauliflowers, broccoli, lettuce back in the 80s. And uh, I was saying to you before, um, you know, in school holidays, I'd be out there because the, coli the, Sorry. the cauliflowers <laughs> used to come in pallets of 30, but the chain stores would only take them in 24s. So we'd have to take a row off, a row off, a row off. And uh, I think I've stacked more of the Valicia. They used to come in a blue box with white writing, Valicia Farms on the side. Um, I've stacked plenty of your boxes down from 30s to 24s over the years. But one thing I will say about the the Valicia name, the Valicia Growing Enterprise, it's always been a growing enterprise that has been focused on quality. Um, it's always been renowned as, you know, I know a lot of shopkeepers, independent shopkeepers in the markets. Uh, my cousins, you know, family included, yeah. would only ever buy Valicia cauliflowers or Valicia lettuce. And if the market was $10, you know, you'd have to pay 12 for Valicia, but you didn't worry because you knew what you were gonna get. Uh, how long has the family been um, farming down there in Werribee? So, yeah, thank you for that. And I need to acknowledge that Valicia Farms and my business is not part of the whole Valicia brand, but we are very proud as being Valicia's and we really have been part of the horticulture industry for a long time. And I guess what I try to do is also acknowledge all of that and the whole thing of it. And it's really quite remarkable. So my grandfather and his brothers came to probably Werribee South in about the 1930s. Um, they started as dairy farmers actually. And then the war started and we had the um, soldiers in Pakapunyal. So there was an opportunity to grow veg for that. So that's how that evolved. And then obviously all the kids, which was one of them was my dad, Valley worked under them and, and you know I know dad was probably told in year nine like stop going to school why, why are you bothering go work on the farm mate like that's where our lives are at and everyone did and and so they all worked together and then they they were a Valicia family business for a while and then obviously as everyone gets mature and you know has their own directions and things like that that's split so there was you know so now currently is Valicia and Farms which is mine but was previously Valley Valicia um, we've got a Valicia and Co, we've got an E&F Valicia and we've got a Valicia Brothers and there was Sam Valicia's um, business as well. So we all work together and we all we all do our own different things and everything like that. But we are really a proud horticulture biz, uh, family and we really love it. And we're still proud to be kind of really, you know, we like you said, and I really appreciate that. We do a good job. We really care about what we do and, you know, like, it, it's really in our blood and I know that's said a lot but it truly is and I guess what I'm trying to do with the way I interact in it is, is just be a little bit fresh and different but I also want to bring the whole Valicia clan along with me and hopefully create a good brand for all of us. It's not about me, it's not about anyone, it's really just about getting people to love vegetables, love farming and really just appreciate the amount of effort, inputs, risk that there is, because I don't think those conversations are properly conveyed ever. And I think the people who do sometimes convey that convey those conversations don't actually have the inputs and the risk. So that's how we try to change it. I've, I've got to tell you, I've been watching your Veg TV and I absolutely love it. And I Thank love you. it on on a number of levels, which I, I want to have a chat to you about. And uh, one of the first things I love about it is you're getting out on farm and getting kids to see what it's actually like. Because knowing I was having a chat with you today, uh, yesterday I had my next door neighbor, young son was outside and he was eating a 
piece of watermelon and I went over and I started having a chat to him and I said, buddy, I said, uh, do you know where that watermelon comes from? And he went, yeah. And I said, where? He said, the shop. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, that's what a yep. lot of kids, um, they just think the fruit comes from the shop. They think that the vegetables come from the yep. shop. Um, they don't fully understand the range of vegetables. There's not, there's not, um, you know, growing up for me as a as an Italian and as a wog and yeah. you know, my grandmother You ate your veg, mate, you ate your veg. You, yeah, you didn't had, have a job. We had a fruit shop and uh, <laughs> you know, we I knew what broccoli was, I knew what cauliflower was, I knew what iceberg lettuce was, because they were our staples. I mean growing but you up. You also knew how to use it on a on a capacity level. Like I think that's the point. Like you knew you knew how to eat it in in bulk. Do you know what I mean? Like you look like you did in bulk. Like, you know, we, we eat broccoli with our pasta tonight, and then tomorrow night we eat yeah. you know broccoli with our roast chicken. Um, yep. you know, we didn't set the table as Italians growing up without an iceberg lettuce, a bowl of lettuce on the table, and I I still to this day eat a bowl of lettuce at night with every meal because it's it's in my DNA, and and I eat iceberg too, and I love what you said the other day about iceberg being the queen of lettuce and it i really believe it is and you know my my dad's an old style calabresi and you know we'll go to a restaurant and he'll order an italian salad and he'll say but what is it he said i want all that hydroponic waterless crap that tastes like water he said get me iceberg or get me cos <laughs> yeah we want some meat we want some meat in our lettuce don't we huh? Because that's that's how we were brought up, you know. You cut a cos lettuce in quarters and dribble some oil and vinegar on it, and you pick up the whole quarter and eat it. But eating habits have changed. Society's changed. Um, you know, people are buying pre-packed broccoli florets, and um, you know you can't beat the originals. And what you're doing in in your veg TV is is bringing people back to nature. Number one, educating them, but also giving them a snapshot of how tough it is to be a farmer and to be a farmer cat that ain't easy no and and i guess you know and i have to be really really honest you know i buy cauliflower rice frozen in a packet at a supermarket i buy broccolini i am full of quick hacks sometimes in my life like i'm a businesswoman also and when I'm at work, I know everyone might find this fascinating, but like, I'm not thinking about, am I going to take a collie home? I'm thinking about how I'm selling collies or how I'm doing all of these things. It's about though, honestly, and really what my passion is, it's about trying to really get consumers to understand that A, veg is not expensive because if you understand how it's grown, the risk, the stress, the amount of elements in the supply chain what you've got is a perfect food it's nutritional it's so holistic it's there's and it, and it really it creates whole societies growing it feeding it eating it like that's what i really want to come across that enthusiasm and i know like it's that's one of my skill strengths like i know i'm, I'm really i talk quick and da, 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 like I, i'm a bit i'm a bit you know there's, there's a lot of energy and, and which is great I really feel, and i really feel proud that i really feel so energetic about this and i've and like you know we spoke earlier you know i really understand the full supply chain so i'm not aligning with any one thing i understand what it's like to be a supermarket and you have lettuces on the shelf and that the people don't buy the small ones. So of course you're going to say to me that your specs should be like this because you're trying to sell it as well. Like I understand what it's like to be in the wholesale markets and what that means to take growers stock. And sometimes you'll get two pallets and sometimes you'll get 200 and you'll have to sell that. Also I know what it's like to be on farm. I know what it's like to be in the packaging. So I really, Veg TV is about not speaking about me or Valicia Farms, even though, you know, we have to it's, bring that into it. Right. Just to give it a, it's raising awareness. It's about, yes, it's and, and honestly, awareness. it's not about selling anything for me because if you go buy another collie, it's probably not gonna be mine. I don't really, it, but I really feel passionate about giving people really an honest, observation and you know we've we've developed a new education 
called school called Veg Education. And that's also, you know, and I'm speaking to you, Rob, and, you, and you're just great, you know, like, and we aren't the people that are getting, when there's a problem in horticulture, it's always in a negative voice. It's always in a, oh, you know, oh, we can't get enough work because we can't do this. And, and please don't think that they aren't real things. But why are people going to be attracted to a energy or a environment that only talks about Negativity, Negativity, you know, like that's, you know, we are like, we could potentially be a Silicon Valley if we sell it properly because oh. we are, we're like, we're the original startups, we're selling food, like it's, it, there's so much vibrancy to it, but you know, the voices the don't sell it. I love about our industry is the personalities on farm and it is, it is a high pressure environment and that goes, oh. it goes from the growing to the marketing, like that, you know, I, people say to me, where did you go to university? And I say, I went to the University of Flemington Markets because yeah. I learned more in the markets than what I ever did when I went to university. You know, I learned more on my very first day in, in the produce markets than what I learned in one year sitting in a freaking classroom. You know, my, my well, first day- It's completely out on focus, isn't it? Like, well, there's, you become- you got to perform. You, you understand supply and demand, you know? I, I'll, I'll tell you a quick little story. When my, my very first yeah, day yeah. Um, in the markets, my dad wanted me to go and buy three pallets of red capsicums. And yep. I said, well, how much should I pay for them, dad? And he said, well, that's what you gotta go find out. You gotta go find out what the market is. So yeah, I went and saw a a friend of mine that um, you know known me since I was a kid. Uh, went to his agent in the markets, and you know I ordered three pallets off him, and I was really proud of myself. He wanted sixteen dollars, but I talked him down to fourteen. And at the end of the day, I went and picked up the docket, and I haggled him down, and I was real happy. And I got back to Dad's office, and Dad said, "How'd you go?" And I said, "Oh, you know, son." I said, "Daddy." He wanted 16 bucks, but you know, I talked him down. I, I got him for 14. I gave dad the docket and I was proud as punch. And dad yeah. showed me his docket. He bought three pallets and he paid 10 bucks. And I think I learned more about the markets on that day than I ever did. And you know, the markets is exciting. Um, the markets is vibrant, uh, but it's the whole supply chain from growing the product. Like for me, I, I do a lot of work in the strawberry industry and you know, strawberries, those little buggers come every day. You know, you don't pick them today and get them out the door. Um, you know, they, you know, we can pick anywhere from 40 to 50 tons of strawberries a day. Um, and, you know, it's it's a rush, it's exciting, but it's also very, very stressful. And, and no kid that is eating a pun of the strawberries has any idea of the blood, sweat and tears that go into that product. No idea at all. And and more so, and I'm, I'm going to put it out there, um, the chain stores don't have the idea of the blood, sweat and tears that go into that product either. So if we can raise as much awareness as possible on how hard, you know, we talk about farmers being resilient people, we talk about farmers being tough people, but we don't actually show what makes them resilient and what makes them tough. And I think that's what your Veg TV is doing. And I, I think it's fantastic, Kath, I've got to tell you. But can I also be a little bit honest too? I sometimes find farmers a little bit like, uh, is the word arrogant? And I and I know that's kind of probably caused you, caused you a lot of stress. I don't mean well, the stress. I think they're setting their way. I think they're prehistoric. I think, you know. Well, I think, I think the fact is like, you know, you know the way you engage with consumers is through these different for forums, doing a podcast, doing these veg TV. Do you have to bring safety or inductions into your farm? Like if you want to, if you want to have a different outcome, you have to start not saying that, well, yes, I might own land. I might have a lot of debt and I might wear a lot of risk, but I can't also just be setting my ways and then think something's going to change. Like, if I need something to change, I need to change. You know, we oh, need to do something different. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And a lot of, you know, obviously I do a lot of compliance work and, you know, the last sort of 18 months with the labor crisis, the guys that haven't suffered with labor as bad as others have been, I mean, probably the progressive farmers, the farmers that- and you know, we were talking to Melbourne University this morning, and I just want to say, Rodney, 
you know, we were to, cause, you know, we set up veg education. The one one course we offer is certificate for and safety, and everyone kind of thinks, what you what you talking about? Like, what you doing? You know, like it doesn't really make sense. And I hate safety. And don't think I hate safety is in I hate safety. I want a safe workplace, but it's boring. Let's be honest, yeah, it's yeah, really it's boring. Right? But it's it's actually the first step in true cultural change and true leadership change. Because if you have a safe workplace that runs efficiently, what you do is you start attracting a different type of personnel. You start to create a workforce that thinks differently. It's a compliance is really unsexy and it's really boring. And when you're a business owner and you're probably in a growth mindset, that's why you're a business owner, you're a risk taker. You don't want to be caught up in this crap and that's kind of how you feel yeah. about it. But it's actually the only way in which you change your business from being a, from being, you know, like it, oh, it's the exactly way you you're coming from because the way you from. lift it up. It's that first step. You, you also make a first have to step. hook to attract people too. Like I, I, went, I was at a farm a couple of weeks ago, and you know, he said to me, "Ah, oh, you know, I, I'm bloody can't get workers, but my mate down the road isn't having a problem." And I said to him, "I said, let's go for a walk, mate, and I'll tell you why you can't attract workers." And yeah. we walked into his tea room and he had four microwaves that have been there for 10 years. And I said, you're a freaking tight ass. I said, you want to attract yeah. people, start providing better facilities, yeah. start providing, you know, a lot better um, areas to attract the people. I said, the reason why your mate down the road is, is not struggling with workers is last year, on my recommendation, by the way, you know, he went and put a bit of brand new tea room he, he yeah. went and made sure that the workers were getting looked after. Um, you know, he made sure that, you know, he supplied them their face masks. They didn't have to go and buy them. You know, it cost him two tenths of bucks. The is we are no different from yeah. any other industry. You know, but, it, people, but for some reason, growers kind of, or growers, and not even just growers, like all of us, we stick our boots in over this. But it's like, this is the game that you're playing in. Like, you... You want to, you want to be evolved. evolved. Kat, you've got to evolve yes. with it. You know, you've yes. got to evolve with it. And, you know, I think sometimes with farmers that they, and I, I butt heads with growers all the time because, you know, I I find a lot of my growers. The ownership model, that's the problem. Well, a lot of them are prehistoric. And the biggest issue with, and especially, you know, I'm an Italian, you're an Italian, a lot of the old Italians are. No, I'm not actually Albanian. 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 Yeah, but they, they're all <laughs> set in their ways where they're, well, I've been doing it for 30 years like this and, you know, nothing's going to change how I, how I do things. Yeah. It, things have changed. Technology's changed. You know, I, I said to a grower a couple of weeks ago, um, I said, mate, you scare me. And he said, why? I said, because I know you're under pressure and I know you're stressed. And That's where we're you're screaming at the workers because you're stressed. But what you don't realise is we live in a social media society now that all you need is one of those workers to pick up his smartphone and video one of your tirades and bye-bye supply chain, you know, that as soon as that gets out there on YouTube, you're finished. And you've, you've spent 20 years building a business and you're going to lose it out of that. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to educate growers on you know, how to keep up with the technological advancements that they need to in order to protect themselves. And talking like, and talking like this too, like they're, they're good people. It's not that they're, oh, you know, and that's, and I would never, I would never, you know, be advocating on something that I truly didn't believe about the inherent good of the, you know, like we're good people. And I also advocate upwards where I say, you know, you bag us for a lot of things in the supply chain as growers, but you also don't give us any tools to improve ourselves. So, you know, you're the ones with the money and the funding, but all you do is complain about how Most crappy times. we are. And, yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, we've been working hard and, you know, I've, you know, I've been educated, luckily, you know, fortunately I've been able to branch out, but some people are not saying that it's either right or wrong, but, you know, like if you've just worked in your parents' farm and then left school at 16 or whatever, you know, you don't know stuff. You don't know how to be run a HR or do this. Oh, and it doesn't mean you're a bad person or you don't care or you don't, 
think it's important, but you're probably stuck in fear. Like I remember when I took the business over first from dad, that I knew there were safety issues out before and I was just terrified about a, how much would it cost me? Cost, B, yeah. how do I actually do it? You know, but I knew it was wrong. Like I knew there was an issue, but I didn't know how to. And then once I started engaging, and that's how veg education was bored, I started engaging and people would say, oh, well, you only have to put a witch's hat here. And I was like, oh, so you mean I don't have to bring in 33 different levels of scaffolding to protect the walker? No, you know, you know what I mean? But, but we don't actually... Our industry doesn't get brought those tangible things. No. And I think that's also a real lack of industry leadership, which I guess it, why we also is. did education. Where it's yeah. like, and I comply is great. Where you go, hang on a minute. People, you know, 97% of the, 99% of the population are bad people. They're no. just scared people. Yeah. And maybe you know, one thing. You're so right because. My, a lot of my clients, you know, they'll get, they'll get an email from Woolworths and say, or we'll email from Coles or Aldi and say, you need an ethical audit done. And they'll, they'll shit themselves starting to think, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? What am I? So I'll go out and I'll say, look guys, tell me what you're worried about because I, I can spot the problems that I can fix, but tell me yeah. where you think the bodies are buried. And half the time, it's not even a problem. It's or it's a problem that can be solved with, or it's you know, a paperwork problem, or yeah, it's, it's a, a you know problem. Like or, yeah. yeah, but I try to educate them, and once we set them up, um, you know, going forward, it's so goddamn easy. So I think there's, you know, we talk about the old. But also, that the conversation then, Rodney, isn't related back up. So the reality is. You know, there, there there might be one farmer every in every dot that does the wrong thing, and that's the that's a great media story. And we're, yeah, we're not and silly you know, like that. Or, right there, you know, he deserves everything he gets thrown at him. But don't yeah, demonise yeah, the whole industry. And, and we and you and I are not saying that. No. Oh, that's defendable. Hmm. But what we're saying is, there's so many other people who really just want to do the right thing, oh. but they're not given tangible project products, mm. and that's why, like. Fantastic for you doing I Comply, the same reason we're doing veg education. Because it's like, if, if you were given a proper induction that was easy and cheap, well, okay, you might have 1%, you know, that are a psychopath that think, oh no, I don't care if anyone dies on my fa farm. But 99% of people are gonna go, oh, well, I'll just do this. Like, this 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 is a good thing. Like, I've, we I've, just... advo I've advocated a lot that I think farmers are misunderstood. I've advocated yeah. a lot that, and I, I believe a lot of our industry bodies need to be held accountable because I think they do a shit job and I'll put it out there. I think a lot of the industry bodies couldn't run a bath. And you know, that's the honest truth. And it's sad because what you see on farms and what I see on farms is totally different to what is seen out there in the media. Like. I, I go out to, I got a, a farm um, and she's one of my favorite growers, Di West. She's, you know, it's a whole girl power farm and it's all run by women and Di is Maltese. She's, she's tough as nails. She runs a good ship, but by Christ, she looks after all the kids. And yeah. you know, she, her father's out there at Smoko taking the little Maltese pastitsis and giving them all to, to the pickers and packers. And, you know, she hasn't had an issue during the crisis because she looks after everyone so goddamn well. Now, she's not in the minority. She's actually in the majority of farmers yeah. that do stuff like that. Um, but those stories never get told. It's always, oh, this person got paid $3 an hour, which, you know, I read an article today that, um, uh, that you know, the unions are at it again saying people are getting paid $3 an hour. And again, you and I are very. Pandemic, don't tolerate like that. that. No, 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 this is not about defending that. Like that's no. horrific. No, that that's is horrific, and they should be named and shamed and kicked out of the industry. Yes, but but that's not that's not the story of our industry. The story no. of our industry is, um, you know, like my great, you know, like I like to say, and even though it's a bit kitsch, but you know, we're with the original startups. We're the original, like entrepreneurs you know like it might be more glamorous if you're making an app but our grandparents your grandparents they flew over into it from a country to another country with no idea risk money to put on land to grow stuff to to make lives for their families like 
it's so revered now. And you know, if you if you're doing it around tech or an app, well, boom. But we yeah, we are the brilliant. original. We're the original. We're the re, we're, like yeah, we're, we're we the. We did it with hard work. Yeah. We did it with and hard work. And we need work. to tell the story. You know, and my, we need my, to tell my, my grandfather came to this country with you know and with nothing, and he yeah. he worked. He worked hard. Actually, he started. He started working in one of England's chicken factories, plucking the chickens. And every yeah. day he'd go to work, and he couldn't speak English. And his boss yeah. would say to him, "Good morning, stupid." And my grandfather would smile and nod his head. And the next day he'd say, "Good morning, stupid." And every Friday night, my grandfather would play cards like all the Italians did. They got all their mates around and they'd play cards yeah. and they're talking. And he says to his mate. Yeah, my boss, supervisor, really likes me every day. He says to me, good morning, stupid. And my grandfather's friend says, do you know what stupid means? Like stupid in Italian, in bubble, we told him in Italian what it meant. So the next day, my grandfather went to work and the supervisor said, good morning, stupid. And my grandfather flattened him and walked out and didn't have a job. And he, he, he had a little tin shed that um, he had out the front of his house and he started growing fruit and veg like all the Italians did and he was selling it. Yes. in his little fruit stand at the front and then he made a little bit of money and he built a fruit shop and then he every time he made a bit of money he built another shop another shop another shop he built a whole shopping center uh, off the back of hard work and and yeah. they're the stories that need to be told not the stories of uh you know our, our industry is a fantastic industry um what we need to do is show people the true aussie spirit and the blood sweat and tears that goes into growing produce and the, and the stories of the past don't define the stories of the future, and that's and that's it, and that's what I really like trying to do. And I guess with Veg TV, I got to a point of being really fed up a few years ago, where I'd see all these like celebrity chefs or people who weren't even anything, like talking about food and this and that. And they you know had ten thousand followers and they're on shows and they're on this, and I'm like, we're we're monkeys, like we're yeah. we're the ones that. Are, got all the risk got all the you know all the pressure got all all the you know the fundamentals of all the things that are just so hard and we are gaining no value from this conversation but we're just letting in this other group that you know have nothing like i'm just like oh i'm catherine now i'm just going to talk about this like because i can talk about this and i'll just make this my brand but i won't put in any you know like I think the other thing people don't know about horticulture and agriculture businesses is, is how much it costs and how oh, much oh, risk it involves. Yeah. Like, you cannot sleep. Like, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm a young girl and the amount of money that I owe NAB, like, it's, it's, it's <laughs> just true. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so and you're one, one storm away from, you know, from heartache. Yes. So why I let someone else then have the the profitable conversation on my behalf instead of me having it is the other thing now that I feel like, A, I want to do for myself, but B, I want to be able to teach or facilitate for other people. And I really do. Like, you know, obviously I want my own success and I'm obviously a very, you know, driven person. So, you know, I'm not here to pretend that, you know, I'm the saint of horticulture, but... I, I want my success, but I also don't want it in spite of anyone else. And what I would love is, if, you know, you have your success and everyone else has their su success, but not other people have success on our risk, on I our risk. fundamentals, you know? No, I, I couldn't agree with you more, but I think one of the one of the greatest things about Veg TV is it's, it is showing um, such a broad range of aspects from the farm to educate kids. And I did a podcast a couple of weeks ago where one of the biggest things that frightens me the most, and Kat, you're you know, third generation or fourth generation, you're an exception to the rule. There's not a lot of young people coming into agriculture now. And every every farm that I go to and I say, oh, have you got kids? Yeah, my kid lives in Brisbane or my kid's down in Melbourne in St Kilda. He's working in a law firm. You know, where's the succession plan for horticulture moving forward because there ain't no kids going into the industry and no one wants to. So yes. like setting a platform of Edge TV, you actually show them that, hey, it's pretty cool to be out on the farm. And yeah, at the end of the day, you know, my, we all need to eat. 
We all need to drink. So if you can be in a pub or, or on a farm, you're going to have success in business, aren't you? Exactly. And I think the other thing, Rodney, what we try to do is also like really bring it back to the fact that A, you know, like I've said, I think I've said it in episode one or two or whatever, like the conversation around ag is really much like you're either someone who plants in a field or you're a scientist, like, and then all the other aspects of the supply chain are ignored. That's, ignored. They're, they're never spoken about, you know, like our businesses are such broad, multi fascinated businesses. And also the other thing I love and, you know, I feel like you know, like you've got a migrant story and I've got a migrant story, right? And so the migrant story is different now. We've got different people yeah. who are migrant. It's not it's not Italians, it's no. not Albanians, Albanians. Yeah, they're all different. Or Vietnamese or whatever. But they can be so successful also in this migrant story and they can use horticulture as the way to become elite and and, and, and build themselves in in, in, just in in the world like we have, you know what I mean? And I'm really proud of being able to create pathways for, for a new multicultural society. So, you know, the conversation of Aussies don't want to work on farm, I think that's also something that we should really take on. Why do Aussies not want to work on farms? Because we don't give career development we have unsafe workplaces and we don't sell it very well. Again, why I've built Veg Education, because I think safety is the cornerstone of leadership, even though it sounds really boring and dry. And don't don't think that I'm like, I actually hate it more than anyone. Like the fact that we actually have it, like don't, oh, I'm the one that goes, oh, do we have to talk about safety today? Like I'm not any different to anyone. I'm not a compliance <laughs> company and sell it to everybody. You know, <laughs> I find the hardest thing. But it changes culture. It does. If you've got a safe workplace, that's the first step of becoming a, a workplace that's of the future, right? Because you can't, you can't be a hack workplace and I, then talk about others. I remember last Doesn't... year when COVID, um, they started these COVID management plans up in Queensland and Workplace yep. Health and Safety rang, rang me up and they said, look, we're, we're coming over to inspect your COVID management plan and we need um, this, 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 this. We'll be there in five minutes because they act on the element of surprise. Don't yep. give you any time yep. to prepare anything. So they've turned up and they've walked into my office and I had you know, 10 folders like this all on the table yeah. and yeah. they're like, what's that? I said, oh, that's all our signing records. That's this, that's this, that's this. Anyway, they jaw dropped and they said, okay, so which farms does I comply look after? We don't need to go look at them because we'd implemented everything that we yeah. needed to. But a lot of farms attitude, the hardest thing for me in compliance is Farmer will cut, I'll walk onto a farm, and especially a lot of the old Greeks and Italians and migrants, right, just, the sort, end. Out, just sort it out for me. You know, I'm too busy. I'm spraying or I'm doing this, I'm doing that. No, you need to come and learn and understand because your culture needs to change. And if you can well, change you know that what? Culture, I think the truth is though, Rodney, I think they don't. I don't think they do. What they need to do is hire someone that's willing to. And I think that's also part of our education journey. Oh, where I agree. They you know, need to. You and I say, you know what? You know, you know, Jim or Bob or who you've been doing this for a hundred years and you have your skill set and actually you don't need to change. No. You've nailed this. Like and you nail it and you're not the but you also need to be willing that the business needs to change. So the you need to model needs to change. Yeah, you're not going to change that yeah. old hog. Yeah, you ain't going to yes. change him. You're not going to change my father. And nor should he be devalued because that old old wog yeah. has has created something that- He is, created the empire that we're all sitting on today. Yeah. Else yeah. Was, you know, like, that old log has some skill set that yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. He was that other people out semi trailers of lettuce and broccoli before yes. anyone was. That other people yeah. exactly that other people would dream to have. So it's not yeah. about saying, "Hey, Jim, you need to change." Jim, you're right, but Jim, you need to hire X, or you need to have me, or you need and to have embrace that culture change. That's yes. the biggest thing. Because you might, you Jim, do if it. you do that with your skill set, and then jump onto the board of things, you're still going to be a weapon because there's something that can never replace Jim. And that's, and I think that's, that's what I love to do with Veg TV also, is bring that spunk to it where it's like, I know I have a bit of that spunk, but I'm also like not really that, 
Like, I know what has to, I know the modern world and how I have to fit into it. Do I actually like it? Well, sometimes I don't really. Sometimes, sometimes I, don't. I think it's not. Mm-hmm. It sometimes is I think it's, it's a lot of, <laughs> you know, like it it's a lot of rubbish. It is what it is. But I want to be successful. So I'll hire, um, interact, do what i got to do there and let me use my skill set to drive. How how I've had to sell it to, you know, especially with compliance and workplace health and safety and making changes. When I when I go to that dinosaur and I, you know, I call that old uh, guy the dinosaur that says, you know, hey, you mean I, that this, weapon. Yeah, you mean that weapon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what I usually say to him is, let me give you a competitive edge so that the chain stores will take more of your produce. And the minute I pitch it to them like that. I say, mate, when we show Woolies and Coles what systems you've got in place, mate, you're going to be green past and you're going to be pumping more stock through than all the other people that they're worried about. And as soon as you can can make workplace health and safety or compliance a little bit cool, or where they see, oh, well, I'm going to get an edge if I do this, then they tend to embrace it. Um, and that's, and, and, and it works, it does work. But it's so fair enough too, because you know, this person, like, you know, I, and, and this is going back to Veg TV and our conversations. You know, go through the times and go through all the industries. What businesses have lasted hundreds of, you know, a hundred years, like commodities, like we grow commodities and we serve, we serve a customer base that has all the power, yep. yet so much of us have survived, right? So there needs to be an inherent respect because a lot of it. people- And I don't think anyone respects where the food comes from. They wouldn't know where the food comes from. And I think that's sad. I mean, you- And even though like Jim's a dinosaur, Jim needs to also then have the opportunity to be Jim because yeah. obviously whatever Jim's done- Done has worked has, because he's built a freaking empire. There's something, <laughs> you know, there's a magic potion, right? But then Jim needs to also to be given a tangible tool to be able to, because Jim doesn't, and also, I, like I said, I took over the, my business. I didn't know how to do some certain things around things that I knew were problems. Jim probably know. Jim's a smart man. Yeah, he's, he been able to, he's, been a, he's been able to make money for 50 years and probably give 13 of his children different houses. Like Jim's yeah, in, going in all 19, right. In 1994, when I did work experience, dad sent me to a town called Stanthorpe to one of his biggest growers that grew capsicums, a guy called Romano yep. Durati, and he. They were a beautiful family, Maria and Romano. And Romano used to get up at four o'clock in the morning and he'd walk his field. And he woke me up and I walked the field. And I'll never forget, he goes, can you hear that? And I said, can I hear what? Because the capsicums are talking to me. I said, frickin' is this bloke on drugs? Like, a cap- what do you mean the capsicums are talking to me? He goes, I look at them and they talk to me. This one's saying I need calcium. This one's saying I need boron. This one's saying I've got a deficiency in this. You know, they talk to me, Rodney. That's why I walk every morning because they talk to me and they tell me what they need. You don't get blokes like that anymore. You know, um, yeah, one of, the, one of the best sayings, and I love this saying, one of my mentors, a guy called Ray Daniels, used to always say to me, the best fertilizers are farmer's footsteps. And I absolutely love that saying because he used to get out every morning and he'd knapsack, um, put a knapsack on his back and he'd weed spray between his strawberry rows. And I'd say, Ray, why are you doing it yourself? Because the best fertilizers, fertilizers are the farmer's footsteps. I can see the problems if I'm out there. And unless you're on farm and you see what farmers do, you can't appreciate it. And I just think that's why Veg TV is so great because it's sad my next door neighbour thinks watermelon comes from the shop. You know, I and think I, that's sad. I think what's so important is, and what we're talking about in a really broad sense, that we all have this place. And I think that, you know, horticulture's always tried to like have a demonised version of this growers back. Like the point is, people are farmers and they're trying to do the right thing and it's a hard job and that's a conversation. There's also expectation from consumers in supermarkets, that's a conversation. None of these conversations are in isolation. None of these are right or wrong. What I try to do with Veg TV is bring it all together and just make it a educational fact about 
Yes, spring onions get hail and they have white dots. Sometimes that's, you know, like I just one, really... One of the biggest things that I, I loved about Veg TV was everybody, like, you know, whether it be Coles or Costco or Aldi or Woolies, if you look at a broccoli head, they want a broccoli head that's three inches uh, or two inches or whatever it may be. Wow. That's their spec and that's what they want. And however, unless you go out on the farm, you realise that not every broccoli head grows to two inches, does it? Or three inches, you've got to find a secondary market or you've got to, you know, have a strong relationship with the central market system to move that. Uh, these are all facets that people might walk They're into the and see a two inch head of broccoli, but you get, a, you get a warm day and all of a sudden that two end inch goes to a four inch. Well, what do you do with that? But it's not what, like, what, as much as you know, I'm not here to advocate for the supermarkets. What, what, it's also not the supermarket's fault because if, if they do have four inches sell broccoli right and they have that on stores and no one buys them, yeah. then of course that they have their own shareholders, their own needs Correct. to do things. Correct. They're in so my, point as well. is, my point is to say to consumers, have you ever asked why all the heads are three three things and does it matter? So the next time you walk in and it is four, maybe instead of thinking this is an inferior product, actually think it's a, an ex, it, it's a better product and, and how much stress the farmer's been under because the weather was hot and it's grown overnight. And that's where I think we have as an industry let let ourselves down where we've never spoken to consumers. We've no. let other people speak to consumers and that's what you're trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do. It's about us now talking to consumers. You've and got to consumers talk to them directly. You've got to let them know. Like, you know, one, one of a good friend, a couple of good mates of mine I went to school with, um, Luke Harris, uh, Tristan Harris, they set up Harris Farm Markets, all right? Yeah. I went to school with the boys and they're great boys. They've got, and they've just opened two stores up here in Brisbane. Thank God, because there's no decent fruit shops up here, but they've now set up um, a couple of fruit shops up here, but they've got an I'm in perfect section where yeah. they sell the marrow size zooks, they sell the larger broccoli heads, they sell, and you know what? It's half the price. It tastes the bloody same. Um, fantastic, yes. everyone needs to be getting on board and doing that. I don't know if it is fantastic. Can I challenge that a little bit? The yeah. premise of the, the yeah, the premise of the fact that it still doesn't benefit the grower because the fact is it's cost you the same to grow everything right, you know what I mean? And really, what is our argument about the fact that something's, it actually suits the retailer still, that, that they yeah, can sell you're something. You're not going to change the perception of the retailer because he's he's got specs. No, and the he's retailer, but can we, that's why I'm trying to talk to the consumer. Yeah. So the consumer doesn't care. The consumer walks in and instead of going like iceberg lettuce is the one thing that it actually grates on me. So we serve the chains. They want this heavy iceberg yep. lettuce. You know what the heavy iceberg lettuce is? Tastes like crap. Yep. Yep. So and then they'll say to me, ah, oh, we sold less iceberg lettuce last year than we did the year before. Well, no wonder because we're selling them the worst tasting product on earth. So why would I buy another iceberg lettuce when I can buy a baby cause that tastes nice? Tastes nice. However, yeah. if you let me buy a nice, if you let me cut a nice young 300, 400 gram iceberg lettuce that was sweet, sweet and tasty. Sweet and tender and maybe and a little bit wider, but it's got the flavour. I people. Yeah. People would probably buy them. But that's why the conversation needs to happen from us to consumer, and it's not going to happen overnight. I, I reckon we're governed. I reckon we're governed a lot at the moment by the chain stores trying to to grow for shelf life rather than grow oh, for flavour. Yeah. Okay, and I'm a I'm a big advocate. Like in, in the strawberry industry, and I'm going to have strawberry growers watch this, and they'll hang me. Yeah. But I'm going to put it out there because I call it like it is. We've got this new variety. Ooh. We've got this new variety which yields double the amount and it has a shelf life twice as long, but it eats like shit. It eats like absolute mm. shit. But the chain stores love it because it's got good shelf life, it looks uniformed, but it's like a, a bulldog with lipstick, you know? Take the lipstick off it and it just eats it terrible. But Rodney, also, we, you and I are both consumers and this is where 
This is where I respect but myself. They, and they I complain think, why they're sitting on the shelf because the housewife... No, but I want to where, where I really respect you too. We see all the elements and the point is to when you buy something and you put it in your fridge and then you pull it out and it's rotten and you also get the shits. So 100%. we see all the elements of it. Yeah. So we do. And that's why I think it's important that you and me are having conversations like this because we can understand the consumer's point of view that yes, we can understand the growers, we can understand the wholesalers and, and you need to be the person who can talk from all the aspects and not, we have no solutions obviously, no. but I think what the key is to it is telling, giving that true information to a consumer so then they can say when they put a strawberry in their mouth and it's tasteless, they can have a true understanding and then they can weigh up for themselves what's more important to them. Is it the fact that they put it in the fridge and last a week? Maybe it is. Like Maybe I, it is, yeah. I don't know. For me, it's not. I I I, I, I buy it with my taste buds. You know, it's got to eat. But maybe it is. And yeah. if that is, well, that's it. That's the market. That's or, the market, and we've got to cater to that. So I buy this strawberry and it tastes crappy, and it's only really suiting this one aspect of the re retail chain. No, I actually want a good tasting strawberry. Like, it's just about the true information. And we've always left that to other people. To make and that's what I love about you. you. That's so and you love about me. We're starting to take that conversation back to ourselves and the uh, true conversation. Yeah, and I think that's what needs to happen. And it, it's it's up to people like you. And, you know, Veg TV is fantastic because you're getting grassroots. You're keeping it fun. Um, you know, you are high energy. Thank it's you. like it had four or five short blacks before they roll the camera. So, oh, yeah. really? Honestly. Uh, I, didn't, like, I, I didn't know whether to call you Catherine, Kathy or Farmer Cap today. <laughs> I hear myself in the thing and I say, Mark, have you got that on on the speed? And he goes, no, that's just, like, as in like on the fast thing, he goes, no, that's just how quick you talk. I said, oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're also making it Kids react to energy, like, yeah. and if they're saying that it's fun, you only got to look at, you know, look at the Wiggles, for instance, all right? Like, kids react to that, why? Because they're energetic, they're fun. If you can give them that education by also making them fun so that they don't switch off, you know, it's, it's a fine line, it's a balance that you've perfected. And I'll tell you something, I watch a lot of podcasts, I watch a lot of YouTube, um, and I usually get bored in five minutes. And I've watched every one of your five, from broccoli to cauliflower to iceberg to spring onions. I've watched them start to finish, and not because we're having a chat today. It's because you keep it fun, and I sit there laughing my head off. But I also thank feel you. I'm getting a lot out of what I'm seeing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I really do love making. I actually really love making them. I really, I really think that they're, they're a good product. And I'm not saying that because it's my product. I'm just saying it because I think it's a really important conversation. And, and the agenda is honestly, it's not about, you know, we don't brand anything. We just have commodities. Like no. you buy a collie, it's not going to be my collie. It, well, it makes no difference to me. If the industry's but, going good, you're going good, Kat, you know? Yeah, and, and I really just think it's important. And I really think I've sat there for years and years and years and just, seeing these celebrity chefs just like, and you're like, we can do this. We're, we've we've got the real, we've got the real content. You know what I mean? Yeah, we've got the yeah, real. You know what annoys me? And I look at, um, you know, and like, I, I love broccoli. Like, don't get me wrong. You know, I grew up on broccoli. I love it. And I can make anything from, like I said, pasta with broccoli to just straight out broccoli <laughs> soup. I love broccoli. All these hybrid varieties of fruit and vegetables that, certain companies are bringing in which you know like broccoli you can't compare broccolini to broccoli right you can't you can't beat the classics okay they're bastardizing everything and you know lettuce is another thing you can't beat a good iceberg lettuce yeah how can you compete that that green and i shouldn't say this because my biggest client up here sorry mark zammett because i do love you all <laughs> right um grows a lot of hydroponic okay but you can't compare eating that waterless shit as you can eating, you know, an iceberg lettuce. You can't. And what we've got to do is get people back to basics, back to simple food. Like, yeah, I grew up and it's cause I, cause I'm half Aussie and it's Italian. I went from broccoli at my grand my nonna's house to chocos at my nan's. 
right? So I've, yeah. I've had both sides of the fence, you know? Yeah, my, yeah. I knew what a freaking choco was, you know? I grew up um, with my Aussie side eating chocos and my wog side eating yeah. broccoli. Yeah. But, um, I'm going say, Aussie wog, don't worry, I know. You can't beat the classics. And, you know, the simple classics of your iceberg, of your, your broccoli, your cauliflowers, you can't beat them. And what we've got to do is we've got to get people back to eating good, wholesome, classical food, not all this processed and pre-packed shit. And the way to do that, Ronnie, is to connect with people the way they want to be connected with, i.e. Mm. podcasts, i.e. television, i.e. Instagrams. We can't be arrogant in the fact that, oh, well, we own land, we grow veg, da da da, everyone. No, the world has talk, changed. You talk about these. And the way we need to interact with the way the world wants to be interacted with. And once we do that, yeah. we have the best product. That's the key. That's what frustrates me so right. much. That's why... I get so frustrated, as I'm sure you do, when you go, if you just interact and play the game of the world with what you actually have inherently, you will win. Have Don't fight it. Have you ever seen one of these top line chefs? You know, well, we grew up meat and three veg. Have you ever seen them make a meat and three veg dish? Have you ever seen them just put a little bit of steamed broccoli with a little bit of garlic, fresh garlic on the side of the plate? Because that's what needs to happen, you know? They're all in the puree and turnips and all this bullshit that they you know, micro herbs. What the frick out of they? Like, let's be Did real. Did you love spring onion one? The spring onion like, is a good one, isn't it? I like it. And I, and I love spring onions because, you know, once again, being an Italian, we had a bowl of iceberg lettuce and we had Roma tomatoes with spring onions and a little bit of oregano on them. That was on the table yeah. for every meal. And, but yeah. you'd be surprised, Kath. You know how hard it is to buy spring onions in supermarkets now? You can't get them. Like, I've got to go to the... In Brisbane, you cannot buy a spring onion to save yourself. I've got to go to the local markets on a Saturday and get spring Ooh. onions. You can't buy them in Coles. You can't buy them in Coles. I'll send you up a box, mate. All right, Please. I promise you. Yeah, you better send me up some because, honestly, there's, you cannot get you cannot get that stuff because I guess there's probably too many Aussies up here and they, you know, they don't eat spring onions, so they don't stock them. But, you know, those, they're the things I was brought up on. And I think what we've got to do is educate kids that, hey, veggies are cool. Um, it's, a, it's good to eat them. It's good to work in the industry that supplies them. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm so many like. subliminal messages in what you're trying to do. And I just think it's awesome. I think it's fantastic. And the, the most important thing you've got to do now is just keep momentum going because you're getting some great traction. Keep the momentum going, um, hit other farms, you know, talk to Dan Andrews and get him to open the freaking borders and come up, come <laughs> I'm up. I'm not here. that powerful. I'm... I think you're overestimating my power there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like about five kilometres out from my house. Is, how, is it, how is it down there at the moment? Is it still under truck restrictions? Yeah, it's, look, you know what? It's been a really, it has been a really tough couple of years and I, I really am so grateful of, and this is the other thing that's actually driven my passion more about talking about horticulture. You know what? And agriculture. You know what one industry that's been able to still work through this whole time that's shown complete resilience? Our industries, uh, right? 100%. But kids, but kids don't want to have jobs with us, right? No. Oh, okay. Do you, you want to have a job in a pub or this or that? And do you know what? That's not their fault. That's our fault because we haven't sold the facts. We haven't sold the fact to them. No, we and haven't sold the fact to that do. That is, that's what is. I want to try to do. I mean, that, I you know, working in a restaurant or working in a farm, you know what? Pretty much similar, really. Let's be hard. Hard work. You know, ten, you know, you know, ten times more fun out of a farm. Like, I couldn't imagine sitting there making freaking cappuccinos all day. You know, that would bore the shit out of me. Um, and plus, we can never stop. We we are food. We will never stop. So if there's any time to jump on to horticulture or agriculture as an industry, as a young person, and to try to build a career, what we have shown through this period is we are the most resilient period. Uh, we are the most resilient industry. We, you know, and that's why we need to have faces and conversations like you and me to drag people that are different, who probably never thought of these industries before because all they've ever seen is no jobs, no money, da da da, going broke. Like, if you're, if you're, if you've got some spunk in you, you're not going to want to come and join these industries if these are the messages you're hearing. But they're not the right message. It's not the truth, is it? It's not the truth. I tell you, you and I both know that. The, the best 
times I've had, and I've worked in a lot of industries over the years. Um, you know, I spent some time living overseas in Asia, running um, companies over there. The best fun I've had is out on the farm, right? Because every day is different. And you know what it's like when you have a full moon and all of a sudden everything comes at once and you're in there and you, you're going like hammer and tong or you, you're sitting there watching the rain, praying that it's gonna go straight over you. Every day is different. It's vibrant, it's exciting. It's profitable, you can make good money. And there's and nothing more important than food. Like yeah. people go to a stock market, right? And they stand in a stock market thing and trades go up and down and they sell things. It's not even real, right? We have food that does that. We have food that actually feeds people. We have the most healthy food. All of those excitements is, is part of our industry. So all those stock market people should be thinking about how do we get in, part of the food chain because we're exactly the same we're exactly the same if you're, business. if you're a young kid now if you're a young 18 year old kid and you're finishing school and you don't know what to do with yourself there's no platform out there that'll steer you into horticulture yep. there's no platform out there but what a great time because all those people at that age there's such a shortage in the industry right yep. now what an opportunity to go, and you'll be, I guarantee it, if you go to any company, you could turn up at Belicious and get an opportunity and you'd be fast tracked to promotion because, oh. you know, there's no one, there's no one in the industry right now. So it's a great opportunity. No one's telling these stories. No one is. That's, that's what needs to happen. So I'm so grateful you reached out to me, Rodney. Thank you for giving me a platform. I'm happy. To, let's have convert. Let's let's book in another one in another month. We'll see if anyone liked what our rants. Our they rants, have for run. sure. Look, I, I better <laughs> let you go because I know you've got back to back meetings. Um, I'm mm -hmm. going to send you an email with my address so you can send the spring onions up because you know you've just made a promise you're going to send me a box up. Or if you've got a Brisbane, will. if you've got a Brisbane agent, I don't know if you send up. Oh, really? What gets there in Brisbane markets? Do you send, who do you send to in Brisbane markets? I'll go there and say, Kath said to give my me a dad's box. There. My dad's working in Brisbane markets. Really? Is he? Yeah, at Purse House. Oh, okay. All right. I'll pop in and see you. Go say hello and say your daughter owes me a bunch of spring onions. Bunch of spring onions. Yeah, I will. I'll take my old man in. I'll reminisce. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kath. Look, great to chat to you. Kath from Belize. Thank you so much. How does anyone get hold of you if they want to do a veg TV out on their farm? Because... I think that as soon as these borders open and things get back to normality, you've got to take the show on the road because, you know, it's, yeah. good to do, it's good to do broccoli, it's good to do lettuce, but it's going to be even greater to do things like stone fruits and what have you. Um, how I people agree. hold of you if they want uh, to get Veg TV out there? Because I think it's a platform that you can really, you can do a lot of good. I agree, and, and I really do love it so much, and I was surprised by how much I loved it when we started it, so I really do love it. I would love to make it as big and as powerful as we can, so please reach out. Go to vegeducation.com, um, send an email, and we'll get back to you ASAP because we, we really do love it, and I think that's what it really comes across in the videos that we do really love it. and. Spring Onions, which is our number five episode, is probably our best so far. So our love is growing. Your YouTube channel where people can watch them, just uh, let us know what that is. That is, uh, that is Veg Education Veg into education. YouTube and Veg yeah. TV is the, is the platform that we use. So please go to our website, watch it, text us, email, anything. Um, we just, we really love it and like, you know, I think I have a skill set in this place and I really love, as, as you do, Rodney, and I think I commend you that you're pushing in different spaces as, as yeah, I think we're you having a And look, if, if you're a farmer and you're watching this and you go and watch Veg TV and you like it, do yourself a favour and share it and get it out there because the only way we're going to get our message across is in numbers. So yeah, one of my favorite yep. sayings is you can't sell a secret. So if no one knows about it, we can't push it. So Kat's doing some really great work at the moment. 
don't just like it, like it and share it because there's Thank we've you. got to get this message out and that's so important. And let's, take the, let's take the power back, you know, like I'm not silly. I know it works for certain reasons that I've got skill sets and you've got products and let's work together to take the power back from the chains, from the... From the be, whole thing. We've got to be the masters of our own destiny. Because- we need to tell our stories and we need to tell it in a vibrant way. And I'm so, I would be so grateful to be able to do it for you. And I love it. So please reach out. This is not as, if, this, if is, I can take, this is a whole industry adventure. If I can take anything out of your my conversation with you today, Catherine, it's been the farmers take all the risk, yet they get very yeah. little of the reward. So what you're trying to do is say, hey, let's, we're taking all the risk. Let's get a lot more of the reward, you know. We're a hell of a lot better than that Drongo chef that's out there with 25 million followers that's got no freaking idea. You know, he's got the same idea as my next door neighbor that thinks broccoli comes from the shop. Um, let's, let's educate and perhaps, perhaps if people see the effort the time and the stress that it takes to grow a product. Perhaps next time they go into a supermarket, they won't want to buy it for 99 cents a kilo. They'll be happy to pay 3.99. And I think that's the message we need to get out. That's it, mate, you've summed it up. Exactly, exactly what I'm trying to say. You know, instead of seeing something on special in the supermarket and thinking that's great, you actually feel a bit sad because you know what we've gone through, the stress we've gone through. It's about taking the glamour back to us, bringing the value back to us on farm because we wear all the risk. No. Thank you so much for understanding. Kat, lovely to chat to you, darling. Kat Felicia from Felicia Farms, Bench TV. Get on, watch it, like it, share to it, subscribe to it. Get it out there. If you're a farmer, get it out there to your friends and then tell your friends to show their friends and tell their friends to show their friends how, that we can do exactly what Kat's saying and be the masters of our own destiny moving forward. Kat, thanks for having a chat with us. Thank you.